and it was Egypt's crown that the new kings of Kush now claimed. The pharaoh's declaration that Amun of Jebel Barkal had given them the right to rule both Kush and Egypt had exploded in their faces. In 750 BC, Egypt was in chaos, the remnants of power held by its priesthood. The priests welcomed a return to order through the kings of Kush, who could rule Egypt with the authority of Amun of Jebel Barkal. And so Pianki, king of Kush, swept into Egypt. The time of the black pharaohs had come. The vanquished were now the victors, and Pianki and his successors would rule over the riches of Egypt for the next century. But military campaigns and ceremonial occasions aside, Kushite pharaohs left the daily running of Egypt to their womenfolk, as Betsy Bryan explains. These are the uh, funerary chapels of the gods' wives of Amun. And in fact, Amunirdis and Shepin Wepet, who are represented here, are members of the royal family of the Kushites. These women, in fact, were left very much to their own devices because their brothers are busy doing other things. So these women represented the Kushite family at the head of Egypt itself. This is a representation of Shep and Wepet, and she is shown in the way that the ancient Egyptians showed Kushites uh, as a separate ethnic group from them. Uh, she has a very broad face, but also around the outside of her nose, there is a slight fold, uh, almost a wrinkle of flesh, which we call the Kushite fold. And uh, here, Shep and Wepet was perfectly happy to be shown as an ethnic Kushite in her own monument, because she was very proud of the fact that that's, she was a royal family member. 